In this video, we'll demonstrate how to account for strategic investments under the cost method, equity method, fair value through profit and loss method, and fair value through other comprehensive income method. Here's the data for our problem. At the beginning of 2023, Millennium Corp. acquired 40% of the outstanding shares of Falcon Inc. at a cost of $550,000. There were no acquisition differentials or fair value adjustments related to the acquisition, and Falcon recorded the following information for the years 2023 and 2024. For 2023, Falcon's net income was $105,000, and it paid dividends of $100,000. And in 2024, its net income was $132,000 and paid dividends of $150,000. The fair value of Millennium Corp's investment in Falcon at the end of 2023 is $625,000 and $585,000 at the end of 2024. Both companies have December 31st year ends. Our requirements are to prepare the journal entries that Millennium Corp should make relating to its investment in Falcon for both 2023 and 2024 under each of the following methods. 1. Cost method. 2. The equity method. 3. Fair value through profit and loss, or FVTPL. And 4. Fair value through other comprehensive income, or FVTOCI. Let's begin with the requirement 1 under the cost method. Our first entry, of course, is to record Millennium's investment in Falcon, and that's an easy journal entry where we're going to debit the investment in Falcon Inc. and credit cash for the purchase price of $550,000. Under the cost method, the next chronological event is at December 31st, 2023, where Falcon pays dividends of $100,000, and Millennium Corp. will record its share of $40,000, or 40%, as dividend income. So the journal entry will be to record a debit to cash and a credit to dividend income for $40,000. The next event falls on December 31st, 2024, where once again, Falcon pays dividends, but this time of $150,000, and Millennium's share will be 40% of that, so the company will debit cash for $60,000 and credit dividend income for $60,000. If we want to show what the investment account would look like on the balance sheet, here's a T account for the cost investment in Falcon with an opening balance of zero, and then the purchase of $550,000 on January 1st, 2023, and no other entries flowing through that account under this method. So at December 31st, 2023 and 2024, the closing balance is still $550,000. Now let's go over to requirement two under the equity method. Again, on January 1st, the journal entry actually will be the same as under the cost method to record the acquisition of the investment in Falcon Inc. So debit investment in Falcon and credit cash for $550,000. Under the equity method, the next entry is going to be on December 31st to accrue Millennium Corporation's share of Falcon's net income. So if the net income is $105,000, Millennium will recognize 40% of that or $42,000 as investment income. So the journal entry will be a debit to the investment in Falcon account and a credit to investment income for $42,000. Then also on December 31st, 2023, Falcon pays that dividend, but in this case, Millennium does not record this as any kind of investment income and records its proportionate share of the dividend as a reduction in the investment account. So the entry will be a debit to cash to receive the dividends, but a credit to the investment in Falcon account for $40,000. Then we fast forward to the end of 2024, where once again, Falcon has to record its proportionate share of Falcon's net income. So 40% of $132,000 in net income is $52,800 with a debit to the investment in Falcon and credit to investment income for $52,800. And then right after that, there's the last dividend that Falcon pays of $150,000, 40% of which is attributable to Millennium Corp. So we will debit cash for $60,000 and credit the investment account for $60,000. It's highly recommended that you use a T-account to track the transactions through the equity account. So if we show what the T-account for the equity investment in Falcon Inc. would look like, of course the beginning balance is zero, then on the acquisition date in 2023, there's a debit of 550000 Then at the end of 2023, there's a debit to the account of 42000 for Millennium's proportionate share of income and a reduction in the investment for its proportionate share of the dividends resulting in an ending balance at the end of 2023 of $552,000.
Then in 2024, there's a debit for the proportion of net income for 52,800, and then a credit to the account for Millennium's proportionate share of the dividends, resulting in an ending balance at the end of 2024 of $544,800. Now we'll move on to requirement three to show the journal entries under the Fair Value Through Profit and Loss Approach, or FVTPL. Again, on January 1st, the journal entry is the same to record the acquisition. On December 31st, 2023, Millennium will record its proportionate share of Falcon's $100,000 dividend, this time as dividend income. So debit cash and credit dividend income. But then on December 31st, 2023, under this method, we must remeasure the investment to fair value. So stated in the data, the fair value of Falcon Inc. at the end of 2023 is $625,000, which represents a $75,000 unrealized gain over the initial $550,000 purchase price. So we're going to record a debit to investment in Falcon and a credit to unrealized gains, which is an account that will flow through the income statement. Then on December 31st, 2024, again, we have Falcon's $150,000 dividend. Millennium will record 40% or 60,000 with a debit to cash and a credit to dividend income. And then finally, at the end of 2024, another remeasurement. This time, the fair value is $585,000, and the previous remeasured value is $625,000. So that represents a $40,000 unrealized loss or decrease in value in the investment. So the journal entry for that will be a debit to unrealized loss and a credit to the investment account for $40,000. Here's what the T account will look like for the FVTPL investment. A beginning balance is zero. The acquisition on January 1st, 2023 of 550,000. And then a debit for 75,000 for the 2023 remeasurement, resulting in an ending balance of 625,000 at the end of 2023, which is what the fair value was at that time. And then on December 31st, 2024, we have a credit to the investment account for $40,000, representing an unrealized loss to bring the ending balance to 585,000, which is the fair value at that point. And now on to our final requirement number four, to account for this under the fair value through other comprehensive income, or FVTOCI approach. On the acquisition date, January 23rd, the same entry as in all the other methods. At December 31st, 2023, we have the same entry as under the cost and fair value through profit and loss approach, where Millennium will record a debit to cash and credit to dividend income for its proportionate share of Falcon's $100,000 dividend. So debit cash and credit dividend income 40,000. December 31st, 2023, we undertake the same remeasurement as under the fair value through profit and loss, but this time, instead of crediting unrealized gains for an income statement account, we'll credit unrealized gains OCI, which is an account that relates to other comprehensive income. On December 31st, 2024, the same entry is under the cost and FV TPL methods, debit cash, credit, dividend income for Millennium's proportionate share of Falcon's $150,000 dividend, so 60,000. And then the final remeasurement on December 31st, 2024, showing an unrealized loss of 40,000, but this time to an OCI related account because this unrealized loss does not flow through the income statement. And then there's a credit to the investment account for $40,000. If we show a T account for the FVOCI investment for Falcon, you'll see that it's basically the same as the FVTPL method with the same remeasurements happening at December 31st, 2023 and 2024 and the same ending balances in both of those years. What's new here is now we keep track of an accumulated OCI account where we track the accumulation of unrealized gains and losses. So at the beginning balance of zero, then there's a credit to December 31st, 2023 for the remeasurement for the unrealized gain of $75,000, resulting in an ending balance at 2023 of 75,000. And then there's the remeasurement for the unrealized $40,000 loss in 2024, which gets debited to accumulated OCI. The result then is a final ending balance of $35,000 in the accumulated OCI account at the end of 2024. Now finally, here's a summary of all of the T accounts for the various methods. As you can see, the cost method is the simplest where the balance of the investment never changes and always stays at its original cost. The equity method increases the investment account 
by the company's proportionate share of income and decreases the account by its proportionate share of dividends, but doesn't include any remeasurements to fair value. With fair value through profit and loss and OCI, the T accounts for the investments are exactly the same, with the only difference being that the remeasurement under fair value through profit and loss ends up on the income statement, whereas with fair value through other comprehensive income, it does not flow through the income statement and accumulates into an accumulated OCI account.